Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here, and I'm back with the last review I'm going to do on this laptop, because I am returning it. It has given me so many issues, and I'm going to get my refund, and if they don't give me my refund, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. But, um, I'm back with a review, and it's a movie I've been hearing a lot about recently, and I'm hoping that I don't get hate or anything, but, uh, tonight I watched... Nefarious. This is a 2023 film directed by Carrie Solomon and Chuck Konzelman, and it stars Sean Patrick Flannery, Jordan Belfi, Stelio Cervante, Tom Omer, and Glenn Beck. Yes, that Glenn Beck. I'll explain. But, uh, the film... In, in this film, on the day of his scheduled execution, a convicted serial killer gets a psychiatric evaluation during which he claims he is a demon, and further claims that before their time is over, the psychiatrist will commit three murders of his own. Now, what did I think of this film? Well, I think it's decent. I think that it has good intentions. Oh, I mean, an, it's not like this is a movie that's, like, evil or anything. But, um, I think this type of story needs a bit stronger of, of performing performances to really get it to hit home like it should have. But there were moments in this that I really found myself engaged and that I really found myself engrossed by the characters. And yes, I do think this film makes a good debate. I Excuse me, I do think it's making a good moral debate, and I'll explain that. But let me get to the actors. Sean Patrick Flannery as Nefarious, or Edward, um... He's up and down. His performance goes from pretty good... There, there are scenes of him playing both Edward, the actual serial killer that he's really good, and there are bits of him playing Nefarious who is the demon inhabiting him, that are really good, and then there's moments where he goes a bit too hammy, I guess is the term, where he's, like, overly blinking or scrunching up his face. Like, I kind of wish they'd gone a bit more subtle with this. Um, and I'll explain some things about that. But um, overall, I, I think he's just a bit uneven. I think with better direction, he could have done a better job, because I do really like Sean Patrick Flannery. He's been in films that I've loved. Boondock Saints. I didn't mind Boondock Saints, too. I'll have to give both of them a watch again. He was in Detox, and even though he wasn't in or Detox or ICU with Sylvester Stallone, he wasn't a big part, but his small role was really powerful. Um... Trying to think of another film he's been in that I've seen. He was in Assault on VA thirty three, but that that's not a really good judge. Like it's that was not a good movie for anyone involved for me. But yeah, I I do think he is a great actor, and I do think with better direction he could have really nailed this performance. And if other people think he was amazing, that's fine. I it's just my personal preference. Jordan Belfi is Dr. James Martin. He is the psychiatrist sent in to see if Edward is um, sane enough to be executed. This character is played to be an atheist, and I will explain what this movie exactly is. Um, but they don't overdo it with the atheist character, um... But he, he he's decent. I think the actor did a decent job. A apparently, he's been in other things. He was in Surrogates with Bruce Willis. He was in... Um, he Apparently, he's mainly known for the show Entourage, which I never watched. But, um... Sorry, it looked a bit wonky. But, yeah. Uh, I, I haven't seen him in anything else. But I, I think he did a decent enough job playing the role. He... When he had his emotional outbursts, they seemed to be well-acted enough. Um, Stelia Savante is Detective Russo. This is the detective that apparently has been 
chasing after the serial killer for forever, and he's only in one scene. He's fine, and uh, Tom Omer as Warden Moss, again, the warden of the prison that the serial killer is in, he's fine, and Glenn Beck, he's playing himself, he's playing a TV show host, he's fine. But here's the thing with this film. Here's the thing that drew me to this. I heard one that people were calling this a Christian puff piece, and I was curious if it even was that. Two, the directors, Carrie Solomon and Chuck Kurtzelman, wait, Chuck Konzelman, were writers of God's Not Dead 1, 2, and 4. Which, I have seen God's Not Dead 1 and 2. I did not care for them. I did not care for how they went after the subject matter, because the subject matter of the movies would have been a very interesting idea for a film. It's just they weren't written well at all. And the acting was mostly subpar, other than Kevin Sorbo in the first film. I think he did a great job. And three, I want I wanted to see if if what people were saying was true was, which is that this is a puff piece again, like Christian or conservative ideology, whatever. I am coming after this film as what well, with my personal beliefs, which is, well, I mean, okay. So what they mean by three murders, he he, the main character committing three murders before. Uh, he him and the demons time are up, time is up. I don't want to exactly get into what it what what makes what he did murders. Because it is a very sensitive issue, and it's not that I am afraid of, like, dividing my audience. I don't want to bring politics into things, but these things are not simply politics. It is... Th this film touches on the subjects of euthanasia, hu human euthanasia, not animal, abortion, and the death penalty. Most, more specifically, the electric chair. This film makes the argument that if you choose to have like a loved one who is in pain in the hospital, who is dying from an illness, euthanize, you are killing them. Or murdering them. And it is also making the, the argument that if you choose to let your wife or girlfriend or whatever get an abortion, you are murdering that child. And if you send somebody to the electric chair, you're murdering them. That is the argument this film is making. Now, does that mean that this film is Christian bait or you can't enjoy this film if you're not a Christian? No. It's not saying that any of the things in the film are perfectly like what you should believe it's simply a moral debate if you think it is morally right to get an abortion that's your prerogative again your body your choice but it seems like the main issue people are having with this on letterboxd is they think that the film is just a mouthpiece for the directors now again Given that I have seen the first two God's Not Dead films, I was not a fan because I thought they could have done more with the subject, they could have made more of a film rather than a mouthpiece, which I don't think Pure Flix is a good company. I don't think they are true Christians. From the two movies I've seen from them, which are the most popular, God's Not Dead and God's Not, Two, God's Not Dead 2, I don't think they are actual Christians. It, and it's not me just trying to like talk about Christian shit this entire review. It's just that I feel like a lot of people are going into this expecting a mouthpiece film and they see it as that because that's what they were expecting and that's what they're being told to expect. I was told to expect that and I feel like I have enough emotional... 
you know, like emotional maturity that I can actually watch a movie and not let my own beliefs get in the way. The reason I like this film is not because I agree with the beliefs of the film. Some of them I actually really don't. For instance, <laughs> well, euthanasia, I, I'm not going to get too into this, but I don't believe that euthanasia is always a... <sighs> Well, I don't believe that euthanasia is always, like, a bad thing. I do think that if someone is in enough pain and they're never going to get better from it, yes, I do believe that it's something that you should think of. But I do think that if the person is alert enough to be able to make that decision, they should be able to make that own, their own decision. Same with... um. The death penalty. I'm not saying... I don't think that the death penalty is always perfectly right. I do think that a lot of people go through the death penalty that are innocent. But I also think that the death penalty could be very preventative with serial killers that have shown that they are never going to get better. It's cl They're clearly mentally broken down and they cannot get better from that. They're always going to kill if they get released. So, yes, I can see that as a preventative measure. Other than that, even though I disagree with certain points that this movie makes, I can still enjoy it as a film. This is a psychological drama. It is not a documentary on what you should think. It is not specifically hammering in your head what it wants you to think. And yes, while there are moments of this film that I think do go a bit far with it, not not like far, but like they do feel a tiny bit preachy at times. Other than that, I just think this is an enjoyable enough psychological drama because the main draw of this film is watching these two characters, one being, excuse me, a serial killer possessed by a demon and the uh, uh sorry the other being a psychiatrist that is an atheist that is the main excuse me sorry that is the main draw of this film that is the main point is that you're watching a debate now there have been films like this i'm not saying that this film is wholly original I'm not saying this film is perfect, and I'm not saying I agree with all of the ideals of it. I don't think you'd have to agree with any of the ideals of the film, because this film isn't saying, oh, if you believe in abortion, you're a terrible person. If you believe in the death penalty, you're a terrible person. If you believe in euthanasia, you're a terrible person. It's not. And if you think it is, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're wrong. This film is not making that debate. It is not making the debate of right or wrong. It is simply making a debate on things that you should at least think about. That is the point of this. And a lot of these childish-ass reviews on Letterboxd being like this one guy saying, uh, Oh yeah, Glenn Beck is in the film. Cons he's a conservative. Okay, a conservative appears in a film and everybody goes insane and calls the film a puff piece. But when Al Roker and George Stephanopoulos from fucking Good Morning America show up in the Sharknado movies, did anybody say that that was a political mouthpiece? No, they fucking didn't. You cannot make the same argument. You cannot have this double standard of, oh, if conservatives do it, it's not okay. But if liberals do it, it's perfectly fine. No, you can't make that argument anymore because you're lying. You're saying that this film is a conservative or Christian puff piece when it isn't. You're it feels like people that just like, oh, it's it's a popular thing to hate on God's Not Dead. And again, I didn't like God's Not Dead at all. But shitting on these creators for trying to do something other than God's Not Dead is getting you nowhere. If And if anything, it makes you look worse for, like, continuing to be like, oh, if there's anybody who's conservative in this film or conservative that's a 
a part of this film. It's awful. That's exactly what they did with Sound of Freedom. That's exactly what they did with um the Daily Wire films. They were like, oh, Ben Shapiro's attached. It's conservative propaganda. No, it fucking isn't. I'm tired of these children. These fucking children. That's what they are. They're acting like children. They can't actually watch a film as a film. They're lazy. All of these reviews are lazy. Making fun of Christians and all that. It, it's okay for y'all to make fun of Christians, but once we make fun of y'all for doing this shit, it's apparently offensive. It's just, it's annoying to hear all these people constantly doing the same shit over and over. But I digress. This film, again, I do think that there are ways that you could do this film better. For instance, I do think that the fact that it takes place in one location for most of it is both a blessing and a curse for this film because I do think that some of the conversations go on a little bit too long on a certain subject. There are certain lines that I feel didn't really need to be in it. There are certain moments that I think could easily be excised from this film. It isn't that long of a film. It's 98 minutes long with credits. But, I don't know, just, and I'm not even saying this isn't for me, I think that there is a great version of this film that, given better direction, I think it could come out, uh, I think that you could get, like, the, the, like, hidden, fantastic version of this concept. Because that is a very interesting thing. Like, oh, the psychiatrist will commit three murders of his own. Again, that summary, take it with a grain of salt. If you don't agree with the politics, if, if you don't agree with what the film is saying, the film isn't trying to sway your opinion. It's just laying out facts and saying, do with these facts what you will. It's not a documentary. It's not a puff piece. Grow the fuck up. Stop calling movies preachy just for being just for having small bits of conservative values in them. Because there's a lot of stuff in this movie that isn't conservative. It really isn't. And it's not it's not Christian either. So just if you watch this film, do not go into it expecting a Christian film. Expect a dialogue heavy psychological drama. With some pretty decent performances, I think, for the most part, there are bits, again, Sean Patrick Flannery is not the best in certain moments, or he overdoes it a bit. I do think with better direction, he could have been great, but yeah. that That's how I feel. I, I guess I'll get to the pros and cons. Pros, again, Jordan Belfi was pretty decent. The score from Brian E. Miller who also composed um, 2,000 Mules, uh, a Dinesh D'Souza movie, which I know a lot of people were mad about Dinesh D'Souza, too. Um, uh, Freaking... Um, it's well shot. I mean, there's a not too much of a variety of shots you're going to get from mostly inside a like prison common area a prison's common area it, it, but like the film is well shot it has nice transitions whenever the demon comes out and whenever edward comes out like it'll go behind them but behind uh jordan belfie's character and then when it's on the other side he's turned into edward or back into <sighs> nefarious so, good filmmaking there. Um, they do a decent amount with the very small budget, which is obvious. It's obvious that this film is a low budget. But it didn't try to, like, overdo things. Like, Renegades very obviously did, where they tried to have, like, an explosion and it looked like fucking clip art. Um, cons, again, Sean Patrick Flannery, his performance is both a blessing and a curse. His... His acting goes up and down, good and bad. Um, uh, 
Again, there are small bits of the dialogue that I do think could have been fleshed out better or better written, and I I do feel like some of the lines are a bit too on the nose and could have been, you know, like, just done better. Um, and I do think a bit of variety in the settings would have helped the film. But yeah, that's my review of Nefarious. Again, I'm not making a statement on if you should agree with things said in the film because I don't think the film is trying to make ch trying to change your mind or anything. I don't think it's doing anything like God's Not Dead. But again, it, even if it was a Christian only film, which it isn't, it really isn't. You can it it's your choice to see a film like this. It is your choice if you go into it expecting what everybody on Letterboxd says that gives a movie half a star when it feels like they didn't even watch the fucking movie. And and they don't mention anything about the actual filmmaking or if what they don't mention anything about the film. They just say, oh, I hate the point of view of the directors, whatever. Don't go in that way. Watch the film if you want to watch it. Don't watch it if you don't want to. Don't force yourself to watch a movie just so you can give it a half a star review. But yeah, that's my review of Nefarious. Um, if you like the review, comment, uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever, and uh, movie review next door. Out.